Like I said, welcome to your second session. Today we're going to still continue with question and answers uh, based on study unit one, two, and three. And remember, these sessions are not content related sessions. We're not going to cover a whole lot of content. We're just going to look at questions and then answer them and then um, also look at ways in which you can target questions when you um, when you are uh, asked um, to answer those questions and how do you answer them as well. In terms of theory, please go through the recordings that I have posted on my uh, my UNISA. I'm going to call it my UNISA because that is what I'm still um, is still in my mind. So please go through my UNISA, or my my module, my yeah. Let's call it my module on your my module uh, or module Moodle um, platform because there is a whole lot of information we already posted there, um, a whole lot of information that can help you understand some of the content. Also, please make sure that you are free to ask any question that you have. I am here and your teammates are here or your other fellow students are here as well to help you unpack some of this content if, or concepts if you don't understand them. Please make sure that you use all the platforms. We also have the WhatsApp group. Make sure that I, I, I saw that before the session today, you guys were active on there. It's good that you are active on there, but also don't forget to also be active on my model as well. And being active on my model helps you to get the feel and understanding of the platform as well, because that's the platform that you're going to use to write your exam as well. So you need to make sure that at least you find your time, uh, most spend most of the time there practicing and looking at things and seeing how the platform works as well. Okay, so enough with the intro. Are there any questions before we start with today's session? going once, going twice, and we are off. We are now climbing up. So I'm not going to go through the same content. We already discussed this. We did some summary in terms of study unit one. You still need to remember all this. They are still relevant for today's discussion. We're going to continue looking at some of the questions, but there are not a lot of questions that will come from this because I think we covered them enough for one and a half hour uh, last week. We're going to also not cover a lot in terms of uh, study unit two, which is the uh, how you visualize or how you put uh, numerical data or categorical data into graphs. However, because study unit two and study unit three, sometimes they are linked. Some of the questions might be asked on the same um, information about the same information. So we're going to have a lot of questions that overlaps between study units two and study unit three. So, but you still need to remember that study unit two is about visualization, and you remember that you need to always remember the properties of each and every one of the visualization or the graph, or even if it's a table, uh, you need to remember the the properties of um, of those. Um, and then we're going to look at study unit three, and in terms of study unit three, last week we didn't cover almost. No question was asked last week in, term, in relation to this unit, so that is why this week we're going to concentrate more on central tendency, variation, empirical rule, and quarters. So without wasting any any time, let's get to let's get to to it. The first question, and remember as well, um, this is not about me; it's about us. Let's have the discussions. Um, some of the question in the beginning, because um, it's just one question, you don't have to do any calculation. Um, we're going to go through the slides as quickly as possible. So I will expect to ask a question and then someone needs to respond. We don't have to wait and think about it. Someone needs to explain. And if it's not correct, then we can state why that question is not or why that answer is not the one that we are looking for, and then someone can give the correct answer and then we move on so that we can go through the slides. I've got about 
32 questions that I want us to go through today. But if we don't finish all of them, no problem. You can still go through them on your own time and we can have the discussion on WhatsApp. Remember, all these questions are there to help you understand the module better, not only for the assignments, but making sure that even when we get to go and write the exam in November, remember now you're going to be writing in November, you can still remember some of these things because we're also building up um, as we move along every chapter, every section. Okay, so the first exercise for today is the easy one. <clears throat> The question is asking the two graphical techniques that can be used to represent nominal data are, do you know what the answer is? Is it number one, number two, number three, number four, number five? Number three. It is number three. It is just only a bar chart and a pie chart that can represent nominal data because nominal data are categorical data. And then exercise two, consider the following score. And you are given the score. The outliner or the outlier score is, what is an outlier? A number five. that's very far from everything else. The number that is far from everything else. So, so what half. is that number that is far from everything else? 13. It's 13. So therefore it will be number five. So now, by now, you should already have realized how I asked you the question and, and looked at some of the items within the question to identify the meaning of that so that it can help me answer the question. And that is what I want you, every time we look at the question, you're going to read the question and then look at what you are given and then look at the key terms that are given or, or identify the important facts that are given. If it's something that you need to clarify in your mind for yourself, like for example, an outlier, what is it? Um, then you clarify it and then you go and answer the question. So I want you to get that into your practice every time you read the question. Don't jump into doing something as well. Ne? Even if you know the answer, but try and think of ways to figure out what the question is asking and identify key items within that question. Okay. Let's look at exercise three. It says... Given the following symbol, we have A, mu, B, S, C, X bar, and D, sigma. Identify the symbols that represent a parameter as a measure of a population. They give us also the what a parameter is. It's a measure from the population. So from A, B, C, and D. So tell me, what is A? Mu. So you answer the A is? Mu. Yeah, it's mu, but what does it stand for? What does mu stand for? The symbol is mu. Mean. But, but it stands for the mean, right? I'm not going to give it whether it's a population or a sample, but it stands for the mean. And S, what is S? Uh, S is standard deviation. S is standard deviation. Standard yes. deviation. Yes. And X bar? It's um, X bar, it's a uh, median. Nope. X bar? No, no, no. Oh, it's mode, I mean. No, nope. X bar. Mm. X bar is? It's a mean. It's the mean. And sigma? It's variance. Um, no. It's variance. It's no. variance. No. Sigma? Standard deviation again. It's a standard deviation. Now we have 
two means and two standard deviation here. Yeah, we already know what those symbols stands for. But every symbol stands for um, the mean or the standard deviation based on whether it's collected from or it's calculated from a sample or it's calculated from a population. So number A, is that calculated from a population or from a sample? Sample. Sample. Nope. A is calculated from? Population. population. Always remember population uses Greek letters. Right, so this one is called the population population mean. And S, is it calculated from a population or a sample? A sample. It's calculated from a sample. So this S refers to sample <laughs> standard deviation. Okay. And X bar? Sample. It's a sample mean. And sigma, it will be population, oh, yes, population. population standard deviation. So always remember that, that the Greek letters, they represent population and the alphabet letters that we know, the standard alphabets represent a sample. Now we need to identify symbols that represent a parameter as a measure of a population. A, B, C, and D. Which one is the correct one? Number one, A. number two, number three. A is the correct one. Nope. Number two. Number two. Number two, because we said A, A is the population mean and D is the population standard deviation. So therefore, number two is the correct one. Right? That's how you will find the answers. You, you first need to understand the symbols and then come and answer the question based on what you have identified. Okay. The following day. No, no. You have, wait, sorry. Yes. Please, uh, you have a question? Send oh. in, uh, um, okay. Please make sure that you are muted if you are not discussing with us. Okay. Let us manage up. Okay. Exercise four. The following data give the starting admission price in rent for one day tickets to the theme park. And the numbers are 58, 63, 41, 42, and so forth. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? And they gave us the, all the statement, they give us the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So it means we need to go and calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Have you looked at how we use the calculator on one of the videos that I shared with you? Because questions like this, yes. you can use your scientific calculator. Otherwise, you need to go and calculate the mean X bar, which is the sum of observation divided by how many they are. And you need to go and calculate your standard deviation which is your standard deviation is given by the square root of your variance, which is the sum of your observed values minus the mean squared divided by n minus one because it's the sample standard deviation. So it means the mean, you will add all of them up and divide by how many they are. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 10. So you will add 58 plus 63 up until you get to plus 40 and divide by 10, and that will give you the mean. The standard deviation, because you've already calculated the mean, you're going to take the value of the mean, subtract every observation and sum it, or every observation from the mean, and square the answer, sum them, add, meaning adding them all up, and dividing everything by 10 minus one. So you can follow that. 
otherwise you can use your calculator. I'm going to show you on the calculator and I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now so that I can share my entire screen. Sorry. <clears throat> OK, so so that we can save time. Sorry, we can sa save time. Don't worry, I'll, I'll go back. I just want to go back to my. OK. So I'm going to start first by showing you on a Casio calculator. Those who has a Casio calculator. I'm going to hide all of this and only show the values. So in order for you to calculate this information on your calculator, you're going to have to put your calculator to a mode a state mode function. So you press the mode and then you press two for state and then you're going to press one for one minus var. The two for A plus BX, we will use it when we get to later on when we get to study unit 11. But for today, we're only going to use one variable, which is one var, and we're going to press one, and then we're going to capture the data by putting the value as you see it and pressing equal sign. So I'm going to press 58 equal 63 equal 41 equal 42 equal 29 equal 50 equal 62 equal 43 equal 40 equal 40 equal. I hope I, I put everything correctly and you were watching what I was doing. So now you have all the data in your calculator, then you press AC button because your data is stored on your calculator. Now I can calculate the mean. Calculating the mean, I need to press the shift button and button number one to reach for the state. So I'm going to press shift, stat. And if I want to look at the data again, I can press button number two. If I want to look at the type of data that I have, I can press number one. I'm not looking at those. And if I want to to find out my sum of X, I can press button number uh, number three. So I'm going to go there and there is your sum of X. So it means it's adding up all these values. So if I divide, I press number two because two corresponds to that summation. So I'll press button number two and I press equal. Therefore, I will have the answer here was 468 divided by 10. And that will give us the mode of 46,8. You can do that manually, but you don't have to because on your calculators, you can also calculate the mean. So if I go back, shift, set, and there is a four var, there is where you will find some of the descriptive statistics. So if I press button number four, there I can see my sample size. If I press one, it will tell me that there are 10 values in this data. Um, my number two, it's your X bar, which is your mean. Number three is your Sigma X, which is the population standard deviation. If they told us this data set is for the population, then we will calculate uh, using three to get the population. And what we are looking for um, is number two and number four because number four is your sample standard deviation. So let's go ahead and press two for the mean and I should get 46,8. And there is your answer. It will be as quick as possible like that. Now I can go and calculate the standard deviation instead of using the long formula. But sometimes you do need the long formula because sometimes they can ask you what is the sum of x minus x squared. You need to be able to calculate those things, whereas you can't do them on the calculator. So in order for us to do that, you go into press shift again and press stat and go back to four. And then now we're going to press four again for the SX. And when I press equal, then I get my answer of 11.10. So my standard deviation is 11.10. 
So now I can look here and look for the answer. Which one will be the right answer to choose from? Did I copy the answer correctly? Oh, I didn't copy it right. It's 10, 11.1003. It's 10. So which one is the correct answer? It's option number? One. Three. Nope. Option Three. number one says 46. Option number one says 11.01. The answer was option 11. Option three. Therefore, option, option three. Oh. Please also, when you're answering questions like this, pay attention to the numbers because you see, if you're going to look at the first number that you see and choose that as an option, you might not get it right. So with multiple choice questions, it's always good that you evaluate all the statements before you state which one is your final answer. Maybe verify all of them again and see if all of them are incorrect before you, you, you finalize your last answer. And this is as you are practicing, as you are doing your assignment. Remember your assignment, you get two chances to submit. So the first time you're gonna do all this around one two three four five and evaluate all of them and then choose the last one the second time you go you already know how to calculate some of these things then you don't have to evaluate all of them um, and when you get to the exam as well you will not have enough time to play around so you need to make sure that as early as now you are able to evaluate all the statements and work through all of them and not only take the first one that you see, right? And that will help you a lot. Okay. Exercise five. The ages of a sample of 40 workers are shown below on a stem and leaf plot. Now, this is a, a stem and leaf plot. We discussed this as part of study unit two. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? The first one they're asking, what is the smallest age? Sorry, what is the most sorry, age? We're not doing it with the sharp calculator. Oh, sorry. My bad. Okay. Oh, you, you want me to show you with the sharp calculator? Sorry. I can show you again with the sharp calculator. My, my bad. Sorry. I forgot. Thank you for reminding me before I move on. Okay, so let's look at the sharp calculator as well. So if you have a financial calculator or a, 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 a sharp calculator, a scientific sharp calculator, on your financial calculator, on this um, M plus, you have an ENT button, right? Um, so you will use, when I say M plus, you will use ENT, but the steps will follow the same, like uh, on either your financial calculator or the sharp calculator, your calculator will follow the same steps. So first, we need to put it to a stat mode. So by pressing mode button and then pressing number one for stat and number zero for SD. And we're going to now our calculator is on stat mode. Now with a with a sharp calculator, you will not have a table, but it will tell you that you have captured your data set one, data set two, data set three, up until you get to data set ten. If you capture and you Every every one of them and you get to 40 and it says data set eight, it means you skipped something somewhere. Or if it says data set 11, therefore it means you captured something twice. So you need to be very careful. And then in that case, you will have to start from scratch. And starting from scratch sometimes is just making sure that you just press a second function and CA to clear your calculator from any stored value and then start capturing again. But let's capture this data. So it's 58 M plus ENT for the financial calculator. And it says data set one, 63 M plus. You just continue 41 M plus, 42 M plus, 29 M plus, 50 M plus, 62 M plus 43, M plus 40, M plus 40, M plus, and then it will say I've got 10 data sets. So with this, 
I am done capturing the data. It's stored on my calculator. I can press the on and off. Now I'm ready to calculate the mean. On your sharp calculator, it's easy because the mean is on button number four. It's written in, in blue or in green. Uh, it's X bar. On button number five is SX. It's your sample standard deviation. On button number six, it's sigma squared. It's your, um, your, your standard deviation for the population. And your sum of X, there is your sum of X and your sum of X squared. So if they ask you any questions around those ones. OK, so now let's calculate the mean. You're going to press alpha first, alpha, and then you press button number four, and then you press the equal sign, and there is 46.8. Same thing, you can calculate your standard deviation, alpha, second number, oh, button number five, and you press equal sign, and the 11.10. Now, what if they ask you, what is the variance? I forgot to also show you on the case here. The variance, you just press the X squared button. It will give you S, um, SX squared, which is your variance, and then you press the equal sign. So that's how you will do it. Also on the case here, uh, to calculate the variance, you just press the X squared button. It will put the answer squared, and you press the equal sign, and that will give you the variance. Um, and to get to the standard deviation, you remember, standard deviation is the square root of your variance. So you just press the square root button. The square root of the answer, it will give you back your standard deviation. That is how you use a calculator. But you need to practice. These things, you cannot just do them once off and never use them again. You need to find more questions, practice, 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 so that you understand the steps and get used to using your calculator. Okay. Let's go to question number five. Question number five, estimate leave plot of 40 workers. We need to find the incorrect question. By first finding the smallest age, the most age, the mode, um, the range, and the median. We're going to answer all these questions together because then I'm not going to give you time to go and think about them because then we won't get through all 35 slides. So which one of the following statement is incorrect? We're going to evaluate all of them. Uh, the smallest age, before we even answer the question, what is the smallest age? First, you need to look at your statement leaf plot and make sure that it is in order. It is an ordered array statement leaf plot, right? Yes, it's in order. Yes, so now let's identify what is the smallest age? 25. Smallest age is 25. 25. So smallest age is 25. Most ages in the sample are greater than 40. True. So, True. It says most ages in the sample are greater than 40. How do you know that they are greater than 40? I would say it's false. I yeah, said true. Hmm? I said true because I calculated the ages of 40, 50, and 60. And this so, understanding, yeah. But so you don't count the 40. One, two, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes. There are 17. 17 above. Above 40. So it's false. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. They are 23 below, below 40. Most ages in the sample are greater than 40. False. No. False. That is false, right? Because we know that most are below 40, right? Yes. The mode of the distribution. What is the mode? The most is the most appearing value. Yeah. So, it's so the most is the most appearing value. Which number appears more than the other values? 41. 41. 41. 
for the one. The range, what is the range? The range is the difference between the largest value minus the smallest value. Okay, so what is our highest value? 61. And what is our smallest value? 25. 25. 25. And what is 61 minus 25? 36. Okay, and the median? They say the median is 38, so we first need to find the position, right? By using n plus 1 divided by, divide by 2. How many are they? There are 40. They told us that there are 40 workers, so it's 40 plus 1 divided by 2. What is 41 divided by 2? 20.5. Twenty point five, so it means it will be between two values. Let's go and see. Uh, we need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eighteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty point five. It's between eight and eight, uh, so it will be between thirty eight and thirty eight divided by two, which is the same as. 38, 38, right? Because 38. 38 plus 38 divided by 2, it will still give you 38. So, which one of this question is the incorrect one? Number Only 2. Option 2. And that's how you will evaluate every statement in order to find that one answer. Before you even come and look at the answers, what I didn't do, actually, I should have went through the question and answered every one of them but because I already can see the answers based on what we wrote in red corresponds to the answers that they gave. And number two is the only one that will be incorrect. I have a question, ma'am. Yep. Uh, in uh, exam situation, will we ever have uh, in a question like this where you'll have more than one statement that's incorrect or correct? No, then that is that will be an error. Oh, okay. Then, okay. Then it means you are you are writing your exam paper in an error, and you will notice, you will see as we go along, because most of the question I'm I'm using uh, come from past exam papers, come from past tutorial letters. There are a lot of um, errors on those ones. We will notice some of them. Um, please don't take it to heart. I think um, nowadays there is a lot of improvement in terms of quality assurance in terms of the questions asked in your statistics papers as well. Um, but yeah, you it might be in rare cases, but if that is the case, then if it gets picked up, the marks will be adjusted, especially even if when you are doing your assignment and there is those kind of cases, the marks will be adjusted. Okay. So can I just say, in my first attempt assignment, there was a question where more than one was correct, and I got less marks for choosing a more in uh, a less correct answer. If that makes sense. Yeah. So the other thing I, I will talk to you at a later stage is around the marks get the marks allocated during your assignment because you don't all also get full marks. You can also get a half a mark, a quarter of a mark or two marks, three marks, depending on the closest answer you get to. Um, but we will discuss that at a later stage. I don't want it to, to dilute our session for now, but we will get there. Okay, question six. Given the data for a small sample of respondents, on the number of hours per week that they spend using email are given below. And these are the numbers. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? We need to find the median. We need to find the mean. We need to find the range. We need to find the mode and the interquartile range. So the median, we need to first sort the data. So in order for us to answer that question and this question, and probably this question. Uh, we need to sort our data. Let's quickly sort the data. Um, 
we have two, two, we have three, ah, we have zero, sorry. Zero. Yeah, I didn't zero. see zero. What else do we have? It's two, three, zero, two, three, five, six, seven, 11, 15, 25. Thank you. There we go. It's sorted always. Now let's go find the median by finding the position first. How many are they? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 plus 1 divided by 2. 11 divided by 2. 5.5. 5.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.5. It's between. 5 and 6. Yeah. 5 and 6 divided by 2. 5.5. 5. 5.5. 5. 5. The mean is the sum of all of them. So add all of them and divide by how many they are. Or you can go and use your calculator. 7.6. 7.6. So you were so I'm getting eight. eight. Why am I getting seven? You're also eight. getting 7.6. Yeah. No. I'm going to go to you. equal 5 equal 25 equal 0 equal 15. Yeah, 7.6. E equal two equal seven equal six eleven equal no shift stat four mean two equal seven point six. There we go. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just playing with the calculator so that you get more chance to look at how we do with your calculator. Um, the range, the highest minus lowest, which is 25 minus zero, which is 25, yes. right? Which is correct. The mode, which one appears more than the others? Two. 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 Yes. Interquartile range. Now, with interquartile range, there are a couple of things that you need to do. I'm going to say this thing now because then mm. later on we're going to be looking at questions relating to quartiles. So we need to first find the quartile one, which is n plus one divided by four, the position, which will be 10 plus one divided by four. 11 divided by 4? 2.75. 2.75. And if it's 2.75, we estimate that this is 3. It's, it's on three. position 3. So position 3 is on 1, 2, 3. It's 2, right? So our Q1 is equals to 2. We also need to find Q3. And Q3 it's 3 times Q1, which is n plus 1, divided by 4. So it's 3 times 10 plus 1, divided by 4, which is 11 times 3, which is 33, divided by 4. What is 33? 8.25. 8.25, yeah. 8.25. 8.25. 8. 8. Which is position 8.25. We go to round it down, and we say it's on position 8. And therefore, our Q3 is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yo, I'm counting on the wrong one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, 8. It's 11. Yes. Oh, yeah. Why am I putting 18? 11. 
So therefore, our interquartal range IQR is given by Q3 minus Q1, not the, not the position, but the value. So which is 11, 11. minus 2, which is equals to 9, nine which is correct. So nine. some of the some of the things at the moment while you are practicing, it will take you longer to get to the answer, but we could have stopped the inner exam. You will get number one as your answer and you go with that. But now while you are doing your assignment, make sure that you go through all the statements. They help you to learn as well because you learn as you do the activities. Some of these things. OK. Let's go to seven. Seven ask, consider the following data set. There they gave you the data set, not in order. Um, Which sorry, one of, sorry, yes. before, sorry before you proceed. Uh, oh. Can you just go back to the previous question? Just mm -hmm. that part. So, um, the interquartile range, 11 minus 2. Mm. Why are we saying 2? Because are we not using... Uh, Okay. We, use right. the, we use the values, not the positions, right? Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm sorted. Thank you. Consider the following statement. Which one is incorrect? Incorrect. So it says... We need to find the median, the first quartile, third quartile, the mean, and we need to state whether is it symmetrical. <clears throat> so the median, we need to first sort the data. Let's sort it. So the smallest. Three, bit. Yes. Four, three, oh. four, six, seven, nine, ten, fourteen, twenty-three. There we go. So let's go find the median position. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight. N plus one divide by two. Eight plus one divide by two, which is nine divide by two. 4.5. 4.5, which means it's between two values. One, two, three, four. Point five is between seven and nine and nine divide by two. Eight. Which is eight. So that's correct. The first quartile we need to go find the position. N plus one divide by four. Eight plus one divide by four. Nine divide by four. Two, 2.25. 2.25, therefore we can say it's on position two, two right? So yes. let's go count one, two. So the first quartile is four because it's on position two, right? So that one is also correct. It's on the second position. It's on the 4.5 position. The third quartile, it's three times the first quartile, which is eight plus one times three divided by four. Nine times three divided by four is six point five. Six point five. Four is on position seven. Seven, yes. And we go count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's 14. So that is correct, right? The mean, the sum of all of them divide by how many they are. You add all of them divide by how many they are. It's 76. Um, that's the sum divided by eight. Uh, it's, it's um, oh, wait, just hold on, please. <laughs> Nope. 9.5. It's 9.5. Now, in terms of the last question, it says the distribution is symmetric. If it's symmetric, it means the mean 
should be the same as the median. The, median. the more than the median. Yeah, and but we can yeah. use those two, the mean and the median. So let's check. The mean is 9.5. 9 the median is 8. eight. So they so are not equal. Right. Therefore, the distribution is not equal. symmetrical. So yes. incorrect answer is number five. Number five. Easy, right? How you do yeah. the answers? Sorry, uh, a, a question, please. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were, when you were calculating third quartile, didn't you say when it's then the answer is six point five? It's between two um, values because I, I can ah, see that you wrote. Yes, you are right. Then it means we are mm -hmm. also here, not right there. We said oh, it's okay. six point five, right? But it'll yes. be between six and seven. It will be between uh, six point um, five. One, two, three, four. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, Two, five, six, and seven. Six, um, seven. 14 and 23, am I right? No. Am I, right? One, I disagree. Two, three, four, I five, disagree. Six, it's, it's seven. Six. It's not 6.5, mm -hmm. it's 6.75. It's 6.75. It's 6.75, huh? no? 6.75. Oh. It was. 6.75. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. <laughs> now okay. it makes sense. Thanks. So then it is on position seven. Okay. All um, right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. On the calculator, um, when we uh, change it to stat mode mm -hmm. uh, and we are done with the question that we're working on, how do we clear that data? Because I noticed that oh. if I try to do another question, it it keeps adding to that information okay. that was there before. Okay, so if you are still on the state mode, I don't know which calculator you are on, so we can do both. Sharp. If you are on the sharp, you just go second function CA, it will clear everything you have. You will see if I press alpha and I press that, it will give me an error because there's no data stored. Okay. So you just press second function mode, the CA will cancel because second function calls those orange values at the top, the functions at the top. So it clears your calculator. Once you're done with the state mode and you want to go back to your normal calculator, you press the mode button and then you press zero for normal and then your calculator will go back to normal. The same thing with your cashew. Uh, with Casio, it's a little bit difficult to clear your calculator. Sometimes the clear button doesn't work. So you press shift and then you press clear and it says clear the memory. So then press two and it says yes. You press equal and you press AC. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Let's see data two. You see it didn't work. Uh, so I'm so no. with the, with the cache here, you can't clear a memory. What I suggest you do is go back to mode, shift, uh, mode two step, and then it will clear your calculator. You will start from, from scratch again. It always works. Otherwise, you can clear your entire uh, setup, clear all by pressing three and yes and AC. And then it will clear everything, and but then you will start start from scratch because it goes back to meds. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you just press the mode and then press one for going back to your normal calculator. Okay, and then Chris, uh, on answer number four, the mean. Mm -hmm. Did we use the calculator? Sorry, I missed that part. No, I didn't use the calculator. Uh, they calculated the sum, they added all the values, that's why they have the 76 divided by 8. So you can use your calculator, remember, use your calculator to practice because it gives you shortcuts. I'm Say, getting 7.5, did I do something wrong? Yes, it means some way you added one of the values wrong incorrectly, so just double check that you enter your data correctly. Okay. I can also demonstrate that just to give you some comfort as well. 
So number one, number two, because it's gonna be quick, I hope. Four, enter. 14, enter. Six, enter. Nine, 23, enter. Three, enter. Seven, enter. And 10, enter. And AC, oh. shift, start, four, two. Yeah, I think I'd made a mistake. I got 9.5. 9.5. There we go. Thank you. Right. Let's move on to question number eight. Time moves so quickly when you're having fun. Consider the following cumulative frequency distribution of distance from home to school for a sample of 50 grade seven learners on a scholar transport. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, they give you, they told you that this is a cumulative distribution table. They have given you the interval, the class intervals. They give you the cumulative frequencies. What they didn't give you here are the frequencies or even the percentages. So they expect you to know how to get to the, the frequencies. So you should be able to move between what also they didn't give you are the relative frequencies and also the cumulative relative frequencies, which are your cumulative percentages if you convert them into percentage. Now, I'm not going to go and answer all the questions, um, like complete the whole table, but if you have time, you need to be able to complete the entire table. So the frequency, for example, we know you need to know how this table is constructed. In the notes, in the videos, we do give you those explanations. You need to go and learn how they construct a cumulative frequency in order for you to be able to answer this question. So a, frequ a cumulative frequency is adding up all the values of your frequencies as you go along. So it's summing up. So in the beginning, it will be the same. Your cumulative frequency will be the same. The cumulative frequency for 9 to 12, 9 to 11, is the value that sits here, which are your frequency from here, plus your previous cumulative frequency. So in order for us to find out what this frequency is, we can just say 17 minus 4, which is 13, because 13 plus 4 is 17. We can also do the same here. Yeah? 42 minus 17, we should give us this value here because 17 plus the value that is here should give us 42. So what is 42 minus 17? I'm just going to copy 25. 55. 59. It's 25. It's 30. 25. 40, 42 minus 17, right? Yeah. It's 25. It's 25. Oh my God. 42 minus 17. So you just minus the previous value. So 48 minus 42 should give you this value here, which is 6, right? Yes. yes. And 50 minus 42, 48, two. so 50 minus 48 is 2. So that yeah. is, this was your frequency, and from this frequency, they built the cumulative frequencies. So that's how the table works. The relative frequency are just, uh, you need to add all these values together. They should give you the same as 50. So the total year at the bottom should be equal to 50. To calculate the relative frequency, remember, relative frequency is a, is a decimal point. It says for this value, it's 4 over, 4 over 50. That is the relative frequency of that um, of 6 to 8 interval or class interval and so forth. So what is 4 divided by 50? I'm just going to do 1. 0 4 divided 8. by 50. 0 0.08. 0 0.008. 0 .008. And so forth. Then you can also do for the rest of them. So you say 13 divided by 50, that will be your relative frequency. 25 divided by 50, that will be your relative frequency. And percentage wise, it's just this value multiply by 100, which will be 8%, and so forth. And the cumulative frequency percent or relative frequency percentages as well, you can calculate it by saying 4 divided by 50, 
will give you your relative frequency. And if you multiply that by 100, it gives you a cumulative percentage as well. So now, we, based on this kind of information that we just learned now, let's see if we can answer A, B, C, and A, B, C, D, and E. Because I'm not going to complete the whole table. So let's go. The frequency class of 6 to 8 is 4. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. That is correct. correct because we just calculated it now. The relative frequency of class 9 to 11 is 0 0.26. Where is class 9 correct. to 11? Is that one? So you just say 13 divided by 50. Do you get 0 0.26? Yes. Yes. You get 0 0.26. That is correct. 0 0.26. Yes. The percentage frequency of class 12 to 14. So where is 12 to 14? 12 to 14 is 25 divided by 50 multiplied by 100. It's correct. 50. It's 50%. Yes. Uh, the midpoint. Now, the midpoint of the class intervals, so you're going to take the two values. So add the two values, divide by two. Midpoint of the class of 15 and 17 is 16. Is that correct? So if I take correct plus 17 divided by two, should uh, give me 16, yeah. right? That is correct. Yes. So you just add both of them for okay. the midpoint because we're that. looking for the value that is in between. I, um, I get that one, sorry. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, okay. And then the width is the distance. That is the difference. So the midpoint is the average between the two. The width is the difference, which means you're going to subtract. So to calculate the width, we subtract. So 20 subtract 18 is 2. It's 2. So this value should be equals to 2. So therefore, that is the incorrect value. I'm so sorry, just, I didn't get uh, D, the midpoint. The midpoint is the average of the two class, the lower limit and the upper limit. So you just say 15 plus 17 divided by 2 will give you the midpoint because we're looking for mm -hmm. the middle value between the lower limit and the upper limit. 16, okay. Thank you. Okay, and then the width we calculate by doing the difference. Okay. Let's see if we get more interesting questions. Okay. The daily consumption in kilowatt by a sample of 10 household is, they give us, the 10 households uh, consumption. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we need to go and calculate the positions. Now you need to read the question correctly so that you can do the right thing. Position, median, which is the value, value of quartile two, which is the same as the median, remember that. The range, highest, minus, lowest, and the value of quartile three. So first, let's go calculate the position of Q1, which means we're going to use N plus 1 divided by 4. There are 10 plus 1 divided by 4, which is 11 yeah, divided by 4. Most. Well, you know, it's Nine. responsive. 2.75. Sorry. Yeah, two point, uh, sorry. It, you're saying it's? 2.75. 2.75, therefore we say, oh no, we're not, because we're not going to look for the value, so we're looking for the position. position. So that is the position. Don't do anything to it. That's the position. And that is the correct statement. We're looking for the incorrect one. The median, so we need to find the position first. N plus 1 divided by 2. 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 11 divided by 2. 5.5. 5.5. We need to order the data. We didn't order the data. I don't know why we didn't start there. So let's order it. Uh, 33, 33. 37. And 
33, 37, 41, 43, 44, 47, 50. Wait, 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 wait. You are picking. <laughs> Sorry. 43, uh, 40, 44, 40, 47, 47, 50, 51. Wait, wait. My pen, I, my pen is something else. 47, 50, 50, 51, 51, 55, and 61. 55 and 61. There we go. Okay. So we need to go find the median, which is on position 5.5. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.5. It's between 44. 44 plus 47. 44 plus 47 divided by, divide by 2. It's 45.5. 45.5. Therefore, this one is the incorrect one. Quartile 2, it says the value. We don't have to go and calculate it because we did calculate it, which we use the same. Quartile 2 and median are one and the same thing. So this is correct. The range, your highest minus the lowest. So 61 right. minus 63 <coughs> should give us 28. And you do the same with quartile three value. N plus one divided by four, which is times three, which is three times eleven divided by four. Thirty-three divided by four. Eight point two five. Eight point two five. Therefore, it is on position eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's 51. So that is correct. That is correct. The only question that is not correct is option two. Okay. The human resource collected data on starting salaries of data analysts in Mira Group. The data below shows the starting salaries in thousands of rands for 16 randomly selected data analyst employees. And that is their information. Which one of the following statements about their empirical rule or about the empirical rule or the distribution of the data analyst starting salary is correct? Number one, the distribution of data analyst starting salary is positively skewed. Uh, the data analyst salary is symmetric. We're looking for the correct one, right? The, according to the empirical rule, assuming the starting salary distribution is symmetric, approximately 68% of them, which is what there are one standard deviation of them, is between that those two values. And 95% they are between those values and the rest, all of them, they are between those values. So we need to first calculate our mean and the mode, if possible, so that we, sorry, mean and the median, so that we are able to find out any of those statements are correct. So this mean, X bar, the sum of all of them divide by n, and we need to also go and calculate the position n plus one. Let's see if the data is sorted. The data is from smallest to highest. It's sorted. So there's no need for us to worry a lot. So n plus one divided by two. How many they are? They said 16, right? So it's 16 yeah. plus one divided by two, which is 17 11. divided by two. 11.5 the answer. 11.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 0. 0.5 is between 2, 259 plus 263 divided by 2. I get 8.5. I'm getting eight. I'm getting, getting two point five. Yes, I think so. It cannot two, be. Six, one. I didn't even check. So seventeen <laughs> divided by two is eleven point five. Eleven point five. Eleven point five. 
8.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Point 0.5 is between 47, 247. And 249. And 249. Makes it 248. Which is 248. Now let's calculate the mean. Whoever has calculated the mean. I get um, 233. 33.25. Yeah. Um, 233.25. Yeah. Just give me a second. I want to capture all the values to the calculator as well. Okay. Because we need to also calculate the standard deviation, 290, 290, 352, should have 16 values, all right? Okay, so shift that one, four. The mean is equals to, do you also get the same? Two, three, three, yes. two, five. Yes. Okay, so our mean is two, three, three point two, five. So we need to also calculate the standard deviation for now because we're gonna use it just now. So let's do that. Shift, step, four. Standard deviation is four. 71.72 70 61 61.72 61 this is equal to 61.72 so now let's go and answer the question we need to find out if the data is positively skewed so let's see the mean and the median so the mean is 233.25 and 248. So the mean is less than the median. So therefore it is supposed to be negatively skewed. So here it says it's positively skewed. All right. So that should not be the right one. And here it says it's symmetric, but we know that they are not equal, so it's not symmetrical. Right? Are we saying it right? When the mean is less than the median, is it positive or negatively skewed? It is skewed to the left. So if it's skewed to the left, it means the tail is to the left. Therefore, it means it is negative right so that would be incorrect <clears throat> okay so now we need to see if either three four and five are correct so 
number one with 68 percent it is one standard deviation so it means we need to find x bar plus or minus the value of your standard deviation so our mean our mean is 233.25 minus 61.72 and the other side we're going to find 233.25 plus 61.72 If you add and subtract, what values do you get? Um, I'm not sure if I'm correct. I've got one seven one point five three and two nine four point nine seven. One seven one point five three. One seven one point five three, and on the other side, two nine four point nine seven. You can just change that to a plus. Do you get the same? Two nine four point nine seven. Yes. Two nine four point nine seven. Right. Then we need to do the same with a ninety five, which is two standard deviation. So two standard deviation. We just okay. I need to write this value here. One seven one point five three and two nine four point nine seven. Don't worry about my three digit numbers, we're gonna fix it just now. I just want to do all of them now. So if we're going to do two standard deviation, so we use the same formula. I'm just gonna use the same values here. Just gonna change it around to standard deviation. So it's two times 61.72. And two times sixty one point seven two, which then it means going back to my calculator, I can just go back. I'll start with the site to open bracket, close bracket, and equal. 356.69. Because I started with the plus side, I'm going to write it first. 35635. Actually, I don't even have to write it here. Let me write it on the so that I can have space to write the other things here. So 356.69. And on the minus side, we get, let's move with the arrow to minus, check square minus and say equal 109.81. 109.81, okay. Let's do the last one, which is there. three standard deviation. So instead of having two, we just change the two to a three. Yeah. So do the same on the calculator. Just change two to three, say equal 48,09. 8,09 and we do the same and change 
8 minus to 8 plus, and that gives us 41, 40, 418. One eight point four one. Four one eight point four one. So, all of them, I need to multiply them by a uh, thousand because these are thousands and these are thousands here. Yeah. Um. So if I multiply this by a thousand, the first one. and convert it to a thousand of rent. Probably they rounded them up. If I round them up, instead of only using three decimals, so if I round this one up, it will be 172, probably. So this will be 172 times a thousand will be 172,000. 294, round it up, it will be 295. Multiply by 295, multiply by a, th a thousand will be 295,000. This one, if I round it up, it will be 110. 110, multiply by a thousand, it will be One hundred and ten thousand. And the next one, if I multiply this or round it up, it will be three um three hundred and fifty seven. Three fifty seven multiply by a thousand will be that. And the same here, it will be rounding up is forty eight. Uh, 48 multiplied by a thousand, which will be 48,000. And the next one, 418. 418 multiplied by a thousand will give us that. So which one of the following statement is correct? The only one that is correct is the one standard deviation. Three. It's option three. And that's how you will calculate them. So once you have the answers, you just need to convert them into a thousand because they say the salaries are in thousands and they rounded them up to the nearest thousands as well. And that's one. Uh, we left with nine minutes. Let's see other questions. Sorry. Consider the following variables. Your height is either a tall or a short. So if these are variables, um, what is the question they're going to ask you? Which one of the following variable above are quantitative? So we need to identify whether this variable is quantitative or qualitative, right? Height as tall or short, is that qualitative or quantitative? Anyone? Qualitative. I think it's quantitative. No. Quanti. No, it's not quantitative. It's, it's qualitative. It's qualitative because they told you that the height in this instance is not numeric. It's either you are tall or you are short. Okay. So it's a categorical variable. So this is qualitative. Mm. Okay, your status as either full time or part time? Qualitative. Qualitative. It's qualitative mm -hmm. as well. Conditions either poor, fair, good, excellent? Qualitative. Qualitative. So the answer is five. A size of a ring, medium. Medium big. Quality. Qualitative. 
it's a size of a TV screen mm. in inches. It's quantitative. 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 So, which one is the correct answer? One, two, three, four. Three. It's number three. It's number three. Only E is the correct answer here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? H, if the researcher E, oh, the H, if the researcher, probably is age of the researcher. The age of the researcher is quantitative continuous. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. That it's correct. correct. Salary of the researcher is quantitative yes, continuous. False. True. Incorrect. True. It's true. It is it's true. true. It's true. Salary is money. Money is always continuous. Gender of a researcher is qualitative. It's true. It's qualitative. It's true. It's quite it's, it's correct as well. Yes, because there is no order, there is no rank or order or um, preference in terms of that or rank. The posi position, junior, mid level, and senior of a researcher is qualitative nominal. Incorrect. That is incorrect because this should say it it's is in order. Ordinal. Then the last statement, we can leave that out. It's automatic. I'm not going to ask you to calculate the standard deviation now, but you can take the same question and calculate the standard deviation using your calculator um, and find out which one of those values are correct. We're going to skip that one. The other questions that you might get might be in this instance. Here they give you a frequency distribution table with the frequency, but they didn't give you the relative frequency or cumulative frequency or um, um, and other and other measures. The question here is asking you what is the percentage of the shoppers between who spent between eight hundred and one thousand. 600. So it means they go between two categories or two intervals. So it means, yeah, we need to add 14 add, and, add five, and divide by the total and divide it by the total and your total is 30. And then times and by 100. Multiply that by 100. And what is the answer? 63.3. 63.3. What is the percentage of, of shoppers who spend more than 1,600? It means we need those two. So what do we do? Because it's more, we take three plus one, divide by how many they are, and multiply that by 100. It's 13.3. 13 13.3. I'm not going to ask you also to do the quartiles because it will take us forever, but you also get the understanding. We did the quartile. You need to arrange the data first. Find the quartile position before you calculate the value or you find the values. So this one says you, that we need to calculate the quartile position, the quartile value. Second quartile, remember that second quartile is the same as quartile two is the, the median. same as the median. The so median. I, already gave you, I already gave you the answer there. Um, 
and you need to calculate the position of quartile three and the quartile interquartile range. How do we calculate the interquartile range? It's quartile three value three minus, minus quartile one. One value, not position. Don't use these positions. You must find the values themselves. Okay. Uh, let's look at another question. Consider graphical method A to D, and they give you all this, and they're asking you which graphical methods are the most appropriate for quantitative data, for numerical data. Is the bar chart good for numerical data? No, yeah. no, no, no. Bar chart? The, the chart, the bar chart for numerical data is called a histogram, right? Bar chart is for categorical. This is for categorical. Remember categorical data, you can only summarize using three graphs. Bar chart, pie chart, and a summary table. Histogram, pie chart is for categorical data. Data plot, stem and leaf plot, are quantitative data, and then you need to choose which one is the correct answer here. Three. And only B, D, B, D, and E are the only correct answers. So I actually included in this, the notes, the same questions that we have here are also loaded on your my mod, my my units, my mod, my module on Moodle. I've loaded the same. I will go and show you just now where to find all the information. You need to be able to answer questions relating to a um, a frequency distribution table. You can see that this one has lots of gaps in between. So the easy way of doing this is to calculate all your frequency, your relative frequencies, easy to calculate. Uh, you, you can also complete the whole table because we know that the last total of the last class interval is the same as the grand total. So you should be able to calculate and complete the whole table and answer the questions. And there are about 34. 35 questions that I have pasted here that you can go through as practice exercises. As you can see, there are more than enough to prepare you before you do your second assignment and your last third assignment. Remember the third assignment, don't rush to go and do your third assignment if you already did your two assignment without understanding the work. So use this to prepare yourself. So there are a lot and lot of questions that I posted here that can help you. And remember, we've got the WhatsApp group that can also you can use to discuss. And also you can use my model, my mo model, my my module. Huh? Can I stick to, can I stick to <laughs> saying my UNISA? I'm going to stick to say my UNISA um, on my UNISA. Um, until I get to the grips with my mod my module or module. Okay, so uh, no, no, sorry about that. May I please have the details to the WhatsApp group? Okay, I will post it on the chat just now. Don't worry. Okay, okay. so these are all the questions. You can see I've got the uh, different questions on here. Most of them have never been touched in any of the recordings, so you might find that there are new questions. Uh, please use them to practice, but also as part of your learning. Okay, so to recap, we've done everything you need actually to help you write your assignment. I'm gonna, I need to capture this moment actually as well. Let me stop sharing my screen. Stop presenting. And then please stay online. I know that we are almost. Almost done. For some reason, I cannot access 
my screen. My PC is frozen. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. As long as you are able to hear me, um, just hold on. I I want to go onto my my model. My is it my? But it's still written my Unisa. Mm, it's my Unisa. I guess we can just call it the class section. Sorry, do we need to stay online? Okay. You had requested that we stay online because you wanted to show us something.
if you are able to see my entire screen, are you able to see? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. This is where I want us to be. So if I click on and I go to uh, the site, my Twitter site, and just also, oh, I need to switch to your view so that you can see your, from your site. Okay, so when you, when you come to the Twitter site, for those of you who haven't come through this site, um, and it's for the first time you're seeing it, the site. So I have included in the announcement, there is the weekly session. So you will see which topic we're going to be discussing. There we go. Uh, today is the 15th of May. We were discussing that. We finished with everything you need to, to learn about your assignment one, right? Um, you're done with your assignment one. We should be, but you need, you still need to practice. So what I mean is we're not coming back to address any questions online in terms of assignment one. Next Sunday, we're going to start working towards assignment two so that you are also prepared before you start your assignment two. You need to know some of these things and then we'll do more activities and then you will do your second submission. So the sessions as they are, you can see what we're going to be discussing when and what are we discussing then. Um, and then the last Sunday, it will be a Sunday a week before. Sunday a week before you submit your assignment. We will do more quest collaborated questions, more questions and answers based on everything you need for. This will be just additional for you to submit your second assignment, your second submission, or maybe your third submission if your lecturer gives you the set the third submission. We will still cover that such sex the session and you will notice that we do I, I will cover some question and answers in between but then we will have a question and answer again where we just run through the question so the others will have a bit of a summary before and then we do the exercises they might not be enough and then we will do lots and lots of activities on the last session they are all loaded the only thing that is not loaded here is the exam preparation sessions because then they will be different because with exam preparation then we'll start with the revision and then we do the mock exams papers and then we do the practice exam papers that i will set for you and you will do the mock exam paper that your lecturer has set for you then we come and do all those discussions here and we will also do assignment uh, we'll use the assignment as part of the revision. So we'll go through all the assignment questions as part of the revision and so forth and so forth. So I will have a proper exam preparation slide, a uh, timetable for us to follow. Um, but it will be closer to the exam. For now, don't worry about the exams. Worry about the assignment. So this is what I wanted to show you. The other thing I want to show you, if you go back, to the beginning and you scroll to additional resources you will notice that there are three folders one is the summary notes folder the summary notes folder is to help you with some of the videos that we have on the lesson plans these are just for all the sessions so you will have all the summary for all the the study unit so you can download them and have them and go through them as you watch the videos you can follow with the notes then i do have the templates we'll use them at a later stage don't worry about them every week for every session that we have the questions that we go through i will post them here so here for today's one is here it's 
it's got the date stamp of today. So this is the session for today. So you will find all the questions we went through here, plus the additional one that we didn't go through. You can access them from there. Access them, yes. And then going back to the homepage, um, the other thing I want to bring to your attention as well, for those who didn't know, so for content, every week go through this. I've already loaded the basic probabilities for those who want to just go through basic probabilities. This is just the session that we had over the weekend on, on Saturday, yesterday. I uploaded that session on here. So you should be able to go through it. It's about two hours long. So pace yourself. Uh, it deals with the basic probabilities. Use this to build up to Sunday session because on Sunday, we're going to just go through the activities. So my understanding will be, you would have gone through your study unit. You've learned through the study guide. You went through your prescribed books, your workbooks and this video. And then we go through the questions, the practice questions and so forth. But I will do a summary first. So you just need to make sure that you go through this video um, and as an, the week goes by, I will post the, um, there is also a discrete probability one, but it's hidden for you. You will get access to it as when I want you to get access to it. At the moment, it's only those three. For now, for assignment one, you can go through all the content that is in those three lessons. Right. The session for today, it's recorded. It will be loaded on here under the online session recording. I'm separating the two because I, need, I don't want to put this there, then you won't find the recordings for this session. So for this session, this is last week's session. The recording it is on here. Let's see. There is the recording for the first session that we had, right? I don't know why this one is not showing. There is There are two sessions actually here. There is the orientation one. So you can use the menu to the first session. For those who are not part of the session, you can go through this video. And then you can also go through what we went through last week with session one. And today's session will also be included on the list. So you will be able to also access it from here. Right, that is all what I wanted to share with you in terms of my model. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to stop the recording right now because I also wanted those who were not part of the session to be able to hear what I needed to tell you.